application analytics. I've been at, um, at Dynamics now for seven months. Uh, prior to that, I was at Forrester Research, so I was Forrester's lead analyst for application performance management and IT operation analytics. Before that, I worked at Fujitsu as an architect, before that, Capgemini. I worked at a number of different startups, predominantly in the Windows environment. I've been in monitoring now since the year 2000. I've worked with Mom, Mom 2000, Mom 2005. I work with System Center. In fact, my Twitter name is Momski. Momski James. I did so much work with System Center and Mom. Now, that's what Microsoft tried to call me. So, I did a number of the first deployments of System Center 2007 or Operations Manager SCOM 2007, release one. That was really painful. Really painful. I remember deploying it and looking at the line of business designer and thinking, oh my god, there's actually spelling mistakes in the GUI. How can this be released? So I've gone through all that and my background is completely kind of uh, Windows and kind of monitoring environment. So the topic today, all about militarizing IT. You're probably looking at this and thinking, WTF? What is this guy going to talk about? Militarizing IT? DevOps is not about that. It's about hugging operations. It's about the perfect harmony of development and IT operations staff coming together to make the world better. And look, this guy, this fool, is up on stage talking about militarizing IT. What is that all about? Well, I'm going to take you on a journey. And to start that journey, we're going to go all the way back to the 6th century BC. Can you imagine that? I can't even think back past 2007 anymore. The day of me not having a smartphone, that's my life now. So going back to the 6th century BC, wow, that's quite a time jump. But this guy on the, on the screen here is a guy called Sun Tzu, a famous military strategist. In fact, his works today are still relevant. If you study military history, you learn about this famous strategist. And he came out with a famous quote, which was, victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and seek to win. And this is really the theme of my presentation today. So what I'm going to be talking to you about is measurement, <laughs> monitoring and analytics. And how critical those components are to actually winning first and then dealing with IT, dealing with our customers, dealing with our employees. So that's the kind of theme of today's presentation. Now, in the first keynote this morning, Steve talked about this notion of CALMS, the CALMS model. Actually, I was quite interested to see how many people have heard of the CALMS model, and I was quite surprised. That was only kind of a small show of hands. But CALM stands for Culture, Automation, Lean, Measurement or uh, Metrics, and Sharing. And these are really the core concepts of DevOps adoption. There's lots of stuff there on the internet about it. Have a look at this model. Today I'm going to focus on the M, which is really the area of measurement, metrics, monitoring. And I tried to think about when I was putting together this presentation, I thought, right, I've got something to zoom in there, so I need to find another famous military strategist to summarise really what measurement is about. So I scoured the internet, had a look for famous quotes, and luckily enough, I found another military strategist. <laughs> so you all know who this is? Will Smith. A famous military strategist. He's famous, isn't he? Did you see what he did in Independence Day? He saved the world. <laughs> He's famous. And, you know, consequently, um, I was looking at his lyrics and I thought, this guy's a genius. <coughs> because he's a, an evangelist when it comes to IT. He's, you know, you look at the Wild Wild West song. He's talking about the state of IT in many enterprises, isn't he? But he also had another famous quote in the very famous album, Will 2K. He talked about the need for measurement. All the way back in the year 
2000. He was a prophet. So there's a prophet today. He said, you never know where you're going until you know where you've been. And that to me summarizes the whole notion of measurement. It's about understanding where you've been, monitoring where you've been, to understand how to improve, understanding how to kind of move forward. Famous guy. Now there's two sides to measurement. I could have done this presentation in two kind of main ways. I could focus on metrics, and I could probably talk to you all day about IT metrics. Or I could have talked to you about monitoring. That's going to be the theme of this presentation, as I've mentioned. It's all about monitoring. So we're going to get rid of the metrics, and my animation is not going to get any better than that. And we're going to focus on this really important area when it comes to DevOps, which is measurement and also kind of monitoring. And I'm going to cover three main areas. We're going to look at measurement and monitoring, defining what, what it is, how enterprises are doing at the moment in regards to this important area. And then going to introduce you to this notion of situational awareness and the UDA model. Has anyone heard of these concepts before? Hands up. <coughs> a couple of people. Yeah, Steve definitely heard of it. So UDA is not a Japanese pot noodle. Um, <laughs> it's something which is vitally important to kind of DevOps adoption. And then we'll, finally, we'll look at free capabilities to speed up UDA. DevOps, to me, and this is the one thing, if you ask, like Steve was saying, if you ask different people, give me a definition of DevOps, you're likely to get many different definitions. To me, I summarise DevOps as being about continuous delivery, fast release, while maintaining quality. So, what do we need to monitor? Well, our world today, in regards to IT, is actually very complicated. There's a number of different elements which we need to monitor. We need to monitor the infrastructure, our servers. Technology here is becoming more com complicated. We can talk about virtualization, we can talk about container technologies like Docker. Then we can talk about applications. Today the world revolves around software and applications. Software is incredibly powerful, isn't it? It's really powerful. Just ask a German car manufacturer about the power <laughs> of software. That was in the video. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you can control emissions via software. We've learned that this week. Um, we can talk about databases. Databases are becoming more complex. In the last session we heard about SQL. All these pains of a SQL environment. Remember trying to monitor SQL. But this ecosystem of databases is changing quite rapidly. Because now it's not just about relational databases, we're looking at non-relational data stores as well. We're looking at the likes of MongoDB, Cassandra, all these new technologies. And then we've got to deal with this, these people, the users. They're always causing problems, aren't they? If we didn't have users, there'd be no problems in IT. Now look, You've probably heard this from many other presenters before. I hate, I, I really do truly hate the word users because they really are addicted to the applications, to the services which we provide. It's actually, you know, I prefer, rather than users, we should be looking at these as customers, as consumers, as employees. That's who we should really serve in IT. But fundamentally, when you're monitoring, probably the most important aspect of all the things which you will monitor, of all the things which you will measure, is your customers, is your employees, is your consumers' experience. That's what kind of really matters in today's world. And so if we're really going to understand what we need to measure and what we need to monitor, then we really need to understand the context, the landscape. And really since 2007, our world has dramatically changed. If you think the way you shop today, the way you bank, the way you book your holidays, the way you travel, a lot of this is driven by applications, driven by software. In fact, at Dynamics, we talk about the fact that enterprises are on a journey to becoming software defined. It is really an organization's software strategy, their applications, which is going to be key to success. And applications, as we've seen, are becoming more complex. Today we can talk about web and mobile, but we should also be talking about Wearables. We should also be talking about the Internet of Things. 
The Internet of Things is making our relationship with technology, with applications, even more intimate. And applications are complex. There's a number of moving parts which we need to monitor in order to ensure performance and availability. If one of our customers, our consumers, complains of a performance issue, then there's a number of different movable parts here which could be causing these issues. It could be the device, the tablet device, the smartphone. It could be the wearable. It could be an Internet of Things device which is causing the issue. It could be the underlying code. It's no longer just about .NET, Java, but we're dealing with new languages like Node.js. We're also dealing with very kind of old legacy languages like C++. All of these come together to potentially give us performance issues. Then we can talk about the underlying application infrastructure, the servers. My background, why I went into kind of Mom and Scott, is that in the years, you know, 2000, 2005, 2007, it was all about the infrastructure. It was all about monitoring servers. That's still important today. And then we can go back to the underlying kind of workload, the storage, the network, all of these different elements can cause performance issues. All the way back to through to that back-end database. And these services today, these applications, may not be provided by your own data centers. Potentially there's going to be a number of third parties which are going to be causing issues here. And it's not just about monitoring, because we're all here at a WinOps DevOps conference today. So we understand the need for fast release to respond to the needs of our market, to respond to the needs of our customers. It's about moving faster. It's also about increasing engagement of our applications. No point developing an application or a new feature if nobody's going to use it. It's also about generating revenue, growing revenue. That's why we're in business. And fundamentally, the last important aspect of this is about loyalty. It's about making sure that customers, your users, stay loyal to your applications. Because today, it's all about brand. And applications are completely synonymous with the brand of your organization. That's really about what it kind of sums up the software-defined business. And performance really matters when it comes to the speed of applications. Two years ago at App Dynamics, we did a study with London School of Economics, which was called um, the App Attention Span. And basically, we analysed the reactions of people using mobile and web applications. So we gave them poor performing applications, applications which were difficult to use, and applications which were easy to use. And we studied their facial uh, responses to those applications. And what we found was that 56% Firstly, believe that their expectations of performance is actually increasing. We also found that 65% say that completing transactions on some of the mobile apps were too complicated. And we also found that 30% when it came to banking applications said they would actually switch banks if they had a poor experience in regards to the applications they were using. So this is the power of applications in our world today. Now how fast should an application be? You've probably read lots of articles out there which will talk about applications need to perform in five seconds, transactions need to execute in four seconds, two seconds, one second. The reality is our perception of performance is shaped by those applications which we use day in day out, or services which we use day in day out. So for example, one service which we use is potentially Google. Does so anyone know how fast Google can execute a transaction? How fast? Like that. So you can see me, I'm blinking my eyes. 250 milliseconds. The blink of an eye. This is what you're dealing with today. Now, not every application has to execute that quickly. I'm not saying that. But our expectations as customers, as consumers, are shaped by those applications which we use day in day out. That's why speed is important. But it's not just about speed of the actual application, speed of transactions. It's also about speed of release as well. That's what I was saying in regards to kind of DevOps. 
This is a common stat. Amazon released new code every 11.6 seconds. It's widely kinetality, but that's kind of a unicorn company. Um, if you go back to organizations like The Guardian, The Guardian is obviously a, a kind of an organization with a lot of heritage. In 2014, they moved towards a DevOps approach. It was a journey for them. They were achieving 24,000 releases in a year. Then we can look at organizations like HubSpot, 300 releases per day. There is a problem though with release without adequate monitoring. And the problem is speed, release, can kill. There's a widely accepted stat that 80% of production outages when it comes to applications or production services are caused by change and release processes. So even though we've been indoctrinated with methodologies like ITIL, which talk about CABs, which talk about the need for release management, we're still not achieving what we need to achieve. And what's the consequences? Well, one of the consequences is we're starting to see some great 404 pages. <laughs> One of my favourites. I don't even know, you know, if you, if you saw this, you'd probably forget why you even went to this site in the first place because you'd be playing Pac Man here. But the real consequences of this became evident on the 8th of July 2015. I'm going to put it to you that the 8th of July 2015 will become a key day in which kids who are learning about technology at schools, at colleges and at universities. They'll teach them about this date. Because it was a pivotal date in our development as a human race. Because it was a date in which we kind of realised that we rely on software to the extreme. We can't live without technology and software. There was three things which happened. The first thing which happened was that American, uh, sorry, United Airlines kind of went down for two hours. They had a computer glitch. Now, after this conference today, I encourage you to go back to Google or go to use Bing and search for computer glitch. I'm a computer glitchaholic. I chase these stories. Basically, these outages affecting real businesses, and they hit the media very, very quickly. Read computer glitch, replace it with really software glitch, system glitch. So this was the first story. The second story was that it was a computer glitch which shut down the New York Stock Exchange. At this point, does anyone remember this date now? Remember reading about it? A couple of nods. They thought it was a cyber terrorist attack, that all these different events were connected. And the third thing which happened is that the Wall Street Journal website went down. Why did that happen? Because everyone was trying to read about this one and this one. <laughs> and they couldn't handle the kind of demand. But this is a pivotal date. Remember that. The 8th of July is when our world became software defined. And this means monitoring is extremely important. Before I go into these stats, how many people have only one monitoring solution in the room? Hands up. Two. What solution are you using? New Relic. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, can somebody just pull this guy out? <laughs> 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 I knew that was going to happen, but she never asked questions like that. Um, how, so, what we did is quite uncommon for uh, organisations to have more monitoring solution. In fact, we did a study with EMA, Enterprise Management Associates, earlier this week, uh, earlier this, early this year, and we found that 65% of organisations have 10 or more monitoring products. Again, this is quite common. When I was at Forrester, we used to run this kind of similar survey every single year. We used to find that many enterprises have 10 or more monitoring and management tools. I did an audit with a French organisation a couple of years ago. They had 82 monitoring and management solutions. Now you could say, well John, that's fantastic. They're really serious about their monitoring. But, 
On the flip side of that, you can say that multiple monitoring tools equals multiple sources of data, multiple sources of information, and ultimately multiple sources of confusion. In this survey, we also asked the question, how many of these tools are actually focused on what's important, your software, your applications? We found only 19% are actually focused on this. And even worse than this, 44% of these 10 tools, nearly half, so five, are actually shelf work. They're not even used by organizations. They're paying for licenses, paying for support subscriptions, and we're not talking about open source here, paying for off-the-shelf solutions. They're not even using them. And there's another problem with monitoring, because this sometimes really does annoy me. Monitoring tools really only focus on one metric. I said I was not going to mention metrics, but this is the only metric which I'm going to mention. What is that metric? Anyone want to guess? Uptime. 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 Another one? User experience. User experience, that's a really important one actually, we'll come on to that. That one. Everyone know what this is? Mean time to resolution. Right? So this is when a problem occurs, how fast can we fix that issue? Now, let me kind of take a step back here. So you're asking me to buy a monitoring tool, to adopt a monitoring tool, to solve and speed up the resolution of problems. Well, hang on. Shouldn't monitoring, if done properly, shouldn't we be avoiding issues in the first place? So why has this stat become super important? For many organizations, they're in a, obviously they're in a kind of mess, so and speeding up MTTR is absolutely critical. But focusing on MTTR, is like this guy, and obviously the picture here, he's not aware of anything else which is coming behind him. There is other metrics out there, and other things which monitoring tools, analytics tools, should really focus on. Which means that what we end up with is a scenario of actually not focusing on MTTR, but meantime to innocence. Everyone know this stat? It's not me. It must be the network team. Normally always ends up being the network team's fault, doesn't it? Yeah. Always the network. So the business is left with saying, look, we're losing money. First blame goes to the network team. Second blame says, no, it's not the network team, it must be the database. It must be a problem on the database. And then we're left with not knowing exactly what the cause of the issue is. All of this at this point means that we kind of end up getting entered or uh, getting onto kind of the phone into war room scenarios where everyone on the phone gets together and says, right, we're going to find the root cause of this issue. And the person, the IT professional who finds that root cause is kind of deemed the IT hero. Really the wrong type of IT hero. And at the same time, this is of great cost to the business, revenues being <coughs> impacted, and also, what's more fundamentally uh, the biggest impact here, is the fact of the brand. Again, technology today fuels your business. So anything which is happening, a problem which happens with your technology, your infrastructure, your applications, that's affecting more than just the reputation of you and IT. It's, rep it's affecting your businesses as a whole. <coughs> but the big issues are, we really are shooting ourselves in the foot here because monitoring tools should avoid one thing. It should avoid your customers, your end users, picking up the phone, talking to the service desk to help desk say, actually there's a problem here. How many organisations does that kind of ring true for today? What? Any people avoiding that today? Any, any organisations in the room which are not affected by this? So users actually telling your <coughs> executives about issues. What's going to happen? So a third of issues, what we found in this survey which did earlier uh, in the year, are reported by end users. And 77% of these issues require five plus people hours. 
resources in order to fix these issues. So our approach to monitoring today is clearly not working. And the consequences of this are not like this anymore. Again, it's one of my kind of favourite pictures of this. I love the effort which someone's gone into here to do this. Look at the way they've used the, the mustard and the ketchup. <laughs> but the problem is with this,